Welcome to the CBT Coriolis Master. In this tutorial, I will show you how to find and rectify sources of error in a Coriolis Master. Incorrect measurements by our flow measurement systems can have many causes. In addition to a technical defect of the measuring unit, an incorrect measurement can also be the result of the overall process or the design of the system. To be able to reliably verify the cause of the error, the first step is to create a service report. Using this report, our application engineers in the factory can define the cause of the error with an accuracy rate of almost 100%. The service report covers the recording of the situation on site, as well as test reports for the sensors and electronics. By creating these logs, we form a reliable basis to provide our customers with the best advice and guarantee the reliability of the system in its processes. Once you have worked through this course, you will know how to perform the optical inspection of the FRAM and what factors are important, what installation conditions have to be checked and logged for a service assignment, how the service interface is set up and operated, how to check the electronics and sensors, and how to edit and fill out the service log. The correct mounting position of the device is vital to ensure that the Coriolis Master functions correctly. This must be checked on site and documented with photos for a subsequent check in the factory. Together with the measuring logs, this allows reliable recommendations to be issued for rectifying the problem. Before taking the photos, consult the plant operator and request permission to take the photos. You should receive permission if you explain to the plant operator why you want to take the photos and what they will be used for. For liquids, the best mounting position is horizontal, with the elbow to the bottom or vertical, and not at the highest point of the piping. Of course, air and any gas released can escape from the meter tube. If gases are to be measured, the vertical or horizontal position can be used. In this case, in the horizontal position, you must make sure that you align the bins upward so that any liquid entering the meter tube is diverted and can flow out. You must also make sure that when measuring gas, the device is installed at the highest possible point of the piping and not at the lowest point. As the device is an oscillator, you have to attach a pipe support behind the device flange. The piping is thus decoupled and the vibrations are not transferred to the piping as disturbances. You can also decouple the device between the flanges. Compensators and pipe supports are available from retail outlets. Now you select the available technology. A distinction is made between compact technology, where the control unit is located inside the measuring device, and separated technology with a separate control unit. Compare the number on the FRAM module with the serial number of the measuring unit. These are located on the nameplate on the side and directly on the FRAM module. The reference data of the measuring unit is stored in the FRAM. If the module has been replaced, the measured values are interpreted with incorrect reference data which falsifies the measuring result. To check the FRAM, open the housing cover of the field mount housing and remove it. With separated technology, the FRAM is located between the terminals. Compare the number on the FRAM module with the serial number of the measuring unit. These are located on the nameplate on the side and directly on the FRAM module. The reference data of the measuring unit is stored in the FRAM. If the module has been replaced, the measured values are interpreted with incorrect reference data which falsifies the measuring result. The FRAM is located above the display. Before we begin, I will explain the hardware of the device in more detail. There are two temperature dependent PT1000 resistors in the device. One is fastened to the housing and the other is located directly on the meter tube. The excitation coil is in the middle. It makes the whole system vibrate, which is referred to as the resonance frequency. The two sensors are positioned further out. There, the phase shift, also referred to as the Coriolis effect, is measured. Now use a multimeter to measure the resistance between the coils. Hold the lug of the connector pointing upward, as shown in the image. This eliminates any confusion between the contacts. Always measure opposite pins, as this is the only way to measure the resistance. The service manual contains a table with the comparison data for the respective connections. The pins to the far left, 1 and 11, belong to sensor A. Sensor B is connected directly adjacent at pins 3 and 13. Enter the measured values in the measuring log. 
On the left-hand side, the cables of the driver coil are inserted in pins 10 and 20. Enter the measured resistance in the measuring log. The temperature-dependent PT1000 resistors are measured in accordance with their temperature. These are located on pins 15 and 5 and on pins 16 and 6. Please measure the pins 6 and 5 and pins 16 and 15 for cable break. Enter the measured values and the reference temperature for the PT1000 in the measuring log. Now connect your laptop to the measuring device and start the terminal program. If you are not familiar with the operations yet, see the following chapters. Hyper Terminal, Preparing the FCM2000 Heart Measuring Unit, and Startup. Perform a parameter dump as described in the tutorial. You now have access to the service programs for the measuring unit. In general, you can check the set values on the device directly or via the PC and terminal program. The most important settings are measuring range and correct output nominal diameter. To display these values, use the arrow buttons to change the specialist menu level and press enter. You do not need a password if none has been entered. For commissioning, all you have to do is operate the device in feed flow. If the device has been installed the wrong way around, the electronics can be set to opposite in the flow indication. Now use the arrow buttons to switch to the flow meter sensor submenu and press enter to go to the submenu. In this submenu you will find a nominal diameter. If the nominal diameter specified does not match, this indicates the wrong FRAM or incorrect data. To display the sensor amplitudes, you have to open the sensor menu by pressing the arrow buttons down until the service menu appears and then confirming with the enter button. You need to enter the service code. To balance the zero point, the medium should be at the required temperature or already have been running in the system for some time. For the measurement, the meter tube should be full. To set the zero point, the flow is stopped and, if possible, blocked by a gate. If the medium is no longer moving, the zero point can be balanced via the computer. This procedure should be performed two to three times to see whether the system zero point can be reproduced. The operation should be performed with the automatic and slow settings. If this is not possible, you can still perform the operation quickly, but this can lead to errors in the lower measuring range. Finally, disconnect the measuring unit from the power supply. Then disconnect the connections to the TTL connector and close the measuring unit by screwing on the cover. Ensure that the seals are correctly positioned. If necessary, lightly grease the seal to ensure the measuring unit is sealed. Send us the file with the data log, the service log, and any photos created to the email address automation.service at de.abb.com specifying the message number if available.